in most role-playing games, there are your four basic combat roles. You got your tanks, your strikers, your support characters, and your battlefield controllers. We're going to be talking about how each one of those tends to maximize the action economy in Dungeons and Dragons, particularly 5th edition. But these tips are going to be helpful really in anything that you do. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series where we will go through how to make a monopoly of the action economy so that you could dominate combat. That's right. We're going to teach you how to just own combat so that your DMs are going to have to watch our videos and learn how to make challenging encounters just so they could keep up with you. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to this J&J Tabletop video. And we're excited about this series because whether you're a dungeon master or a player, you are able to kind of maximize the effectiveness and really just understand how everything goes, particularly in how each role is going to approach combat. Because what makes them effective is different based on how they try to do things. And we're going to be talking about how they use their actions. You call it an action economy. So it's kind of like, what are you going to get with your purchase? right? You're going to spend your action on something. That's certainly one way you can look at it. So why don't we start off with one of the most classic roles, and that would be the tank. Josh, what do you got for us? A tank is probably a role that you've heard of before. If you've played any sort of video game or like RPG before, a tank is exactly what you think it is. It is that heavily armored or just strong person or thing that is going to do its best to grab aggro. So like get the attention of the other enemies and then just soak up their actions. And why do they do that? Well, it's because this is the character that has the high AC. So they're hard to hit or they have the high hit points. So you do hit them. It's not going to matter as much or it's the class that has the uh, some sort of like healing capability where they could just heal themselves and, and then get right back to it. So these would be your barbarians, sometimes your clerics, fighters, rangers, paladins, anything like that. And while all of those classes could do other roles, all of them would be good options for a tank, even druids, actually. Oh, yeah. A good moon druid can tank like a champ. Yes, sir. But a druid could do something else as well, though. But it's something that's typical for magic users. That's battlefield controller, which is another role. Similar to the tank in a way that they're going to take enemy actions and render them ineffective or not even useful at all, right? So like if someone attacks and misses, that action was theoretically, you could say that was wasted. So a battlefield controller is seeking to make sure that the combat happens on their terms. That's the druid that casts Entangle and now locks down a whole area or group of people, and now they just can't move, right? And so if a whole group of orcs is charging you with you know, their axe in their hand, now they can't get to you. That renders a ton of actions ineffective, and that's exactly what the battlefield controller is doing. They're the debuffer, if you will. Usually the classic roles here, Josh mentioned the druid is good at this. Druid's kind of good at everything. You have the druid, the wizard, the sorcerer. Bards can be great at this kind of thing. Bards also have a tendency to be pretty much able to do almost any of the roles as well, which is kind of cool. But yes, usually there's also some kind of like overlap with support class characters. However, their focus is on hindering and just making sure the enemy actions are as ineffective as possible. But Josh, you also have some experience with one of the more classic roles, and that would be your striker, which is a 4E label. What do strikers do? Strikers are, are known for dealing damage, right? And using my own words from a previous video, they're, they're going to hit something. They're going to hit them as hard as they can. They're going to hit it as often as they can. <laughs> um, uh, and I won't set myself on fire after saying that this time. They're, they're going to be do some, doing something that, again, if you've played video games, it's going to be DPS, damage per second. So they're trying to do the most damage that they could do. They're going to be making the most of, like, I'm going to make this attack, but not only am I going to make this attack, I'm going to use my Hunter's Mark or my Hexblade's Curse or any of those things so that I can stack damage or stack really stack dice just to do the most amount of damage possible. There could be a lot of overlap with tanks or even battlefield controllers for that. and really. Most classes, pretty much every class, can fill this role. Rangers, fighters, rogues. Our rogue, if you watch the Angel Relics and Hokie Religions game, our rogue, Wenin, 
and took out a, I don't want to say very strong opponent, like, it's not like they had a ton of hit points, and, you know, they were like a bullet sponge, but pretty high level thing with a good amount of hit points left, went in, critted, and did 50 plus points of damage in one hit. I was going to say, um, it, 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 because he only took damage in the beginning a little bit, it, it felt like you one-shot him. It felt <laughs> pretty, like it. Pretty much. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but dang. No, that was a hero moment and a half. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. Like, you're, you're stacking, stacking dice. So, you know, you, you sneak attack, you poison, your, your weapon damage. He crit, so double all of those, you know? Rogues are great at that. They're that one good hit. But you also have paladins, which are also really good at the one good hit. Warlocks, wizards, pretty much every class to some extent is going to be good at being a striker. But not every class is good at offering support outside of you know dealing damage and just soaking hits. Your support class character is usually the most classic version is the healer. This is the person that keeps everybody's hit points up, do spells like Bless so that you're hitting more often and protected against enemy spell effects and things like that. What they do really is they focus on allied actions and try and make those actions as effective as possible. So when you see think of something like Bless or Fairy Fire, that's going to make targets easier to hit to make sure that your striker can do what strikers do best or whatever the case may be when i think about the classic support characters i think clerics are probably the most classic one if you, especially if you're going back as far as you can the druid could do that our uh, divine soul sorcerer Melly, when she was like what do i want to do i want to heal and then heal some more <laughs> and heal again and i want to do it weird and i was like all right well it sounds like you're gonna be a divine soul sorcerer um and it's been incredible but one of my favorite support characters actually is the bard because they have access to a lot of other things but their bardic inspiration can be applied to attacks that miss or skill checks they they kind of can be able to do those things in any way possible uh, and on more situations when all of these roles are working together it's like a symphony it's like a band it's like a band of adventurers you got your lead guitar player you got your bass player your drummer all of it it's 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 really fun to watch. You're all working together for that one goal, and that one goal, of course, is to defeat the dungeon master and thwart his or her or their plans. Yes, and... that is the goal of D and D. <laughs> <laughs> all of these specific roles, and and you could build your character to be really good at the one thing. A lot of the times, there is overlap. Like a battlefield controller could also be really good at support. A striker could also be really good at tanking. Marcus, my battle master fighter, I like to think was pretty good at, like his best thing was striking. Second best thing was a combination of battlefield control and tanking, just with the way that certain builds are set up. If you think about combat in terms of these roles and what goals you're trying to accomplish through the roles, you're going to have a real good time with it. It gets really fun, especially when you when everybody at the table understands what everybody else is looking to do and or is good at. That's when it gets really exciting. And uh, like you said, Josh, there's overlap, but also sometimes you, you switch roles from one turn to the next based on the needs of the fight. There's a lot that goes into mastering the action economy, and we're going to go over all of it. We wanted to start with roles first because we think that's going to give some more context for the rest of these concepts in this series. going to give you a way to just look at that through what role you're playing and what your goal is. We hope you enjoyed this. We hope you learned something. And we hope you're looking forward to the rest of this series, because we certainly are. If you want to learn more about how to make the most out of your games, just check out some of the many playlists that we have here. Drop a comment, subscribe, and uh, join our Discord so we can talk all the time. Tune in next week as we go over how movement and position can make all the difference in your combats.